Welcome to the tropics. This is a spontaneous grow of mold and mildew in presence of humid air. Look at this thermal image. Is there anything unusual? Windows are orange hot. In this climate windows are almost always cooler than the environment. This picture was taken right after rain. The building is covered by cement tile. It's a double attics with an intermittent thermal insulation placed over a false ceiling. Look at this photo. Do you see anything unusual here? We made the answer easy by highlighting the dry area of the roof on the photo. It's a fire station designed in 1992. Windows are covered with hurricane panels. These are dormitories for firemen and other similar rooms which don't really need the natural light. Windows are covered with condensation and approximately 2 tons of cooling low load is saved. Is it good? Well, they are probably saving $500 a year, give or take. The trouble is workers get sick, with some rare microbes discovered growing both in lungs of one of them and in this building. This particular roof is very well thermally insulated with not one, but two overlying attic spaces divided by an insulated deck. So it's a double attic with an intermittent thermal insulation placed over a false ceiling. It's in many aspects better than a modern high albedo roof with a solar reflectance index in a range of 75%, which is touted as very energy efficient and shown here uh, by comparison. You can see that moisture generally refuses to evaporate from such a roof. The temperature measured on a roof like that is practically the same as the surrounding ambient air. If it was an ordinary roof, it would be too hot to touch. This is very symptomatic and typical for uh, energy efficient buildings. When you block the source of the heat, these poor guys strapped desk lamps to heat the wall thermostats in order to increase the air conditioning cycling to lower the air humidity. Naturally, it made the interiors very cold. Yet, it didn't provide sufficient dehumidification. There was mold and mildew growing in the return air plenums. This was actually the very first sick building that I investigated where I got sick myself because I crawled these plenums above suspended ceilings. The most typical symptom is the microbial growth on air diffusers and the moisture damage that could be seen around them. Many buildings in hot and humid climates are like that. Here is the makeup air duct discharging into the air conditioning cabinet. You can see it's still active, although others were taped shut. And you can see the corrosion associated with high humidity. Here is the perpendicular section of the building with my marks describing functions of certain spaces. The ceilings are negatively pressurized, which is fairly typical in such buildings, where no dedicated return ducts were installed. And here you can see the same section with the color-coded temperatures and small plus and minus marks indicating positive and negative pressurization. This is one of those interesting cases where the building envelope, in mechanical sense, can extend far beyond the building enclosure. Here is the general plan of the building with the indication of three different mechanical zones, generally speaking. It's a relatively small building, but uh, imagining three-dimensional relationships and boundaries among different mechanical zones is a quite uh, an exercise. For example, the equipment room that's sitting in the middle of the building is depressurized by very powerful fans. In this room, chalkboard warped from moisture. Remember, the interior is kept very cool, so the exterior walls are sweating. Similar building in this climate would typically see failures of tiled surfaces, including flooring covered with impermeable materials. Few sources of information are available, and once researched, it turns out few interior flooring materials are permeable. I devised a quick, simple and portable bench test that you could use to verify them, described in a paper available on our website. The building was subsequently remodeled, and here is the new, replaced thermostat. You can see the AHU blows saturated air, and the humidity level is around 70%, which is when a spontaneous microbial growth starts. The makeup air ducts are still leaking water that condensed inside them, and the AC is cranked so low that water condenses on ducts and access panels, and the suspended ceiling remains negatively pressurized.
It's disappointing, when one considers that the very reason for the remodeling was to fix those issues. Similar issues are typical unintended consequences of making fenestration energy efficient and hurricane resistant. So the most typical story I hear goes somehow like that. We replaced our window and since then our kid has been sick, uh, our flooring got warped, uh, insects crawl everywhere and holes open in the floor deck. Oh god, it must be the fault of the contractor. Similar effects come as a result of other improvements in a building enclosure, thermally speaking. We just lowered the ventilation rate, reduced the solar heat gain, and lowered the cooling load, saving on our electrical bill, but uh, larger humidity fluctuations result promoting the microbial growth, there is more contaminated air, which is the recipe for allergic respiratory reactions for many of us. And uh, we also stopped diluting the interior contaminants, such as this new carpet smell and uh, so on. The same mechanism is responsible when the thermal insulative materials are placed in a building enclosure, regardless whether it's cold or hot climate. When you cut the source of the energy by reducing the heat transfer, suddenly the moisture takes longer to evaporate and therefore insects, fungi and bacteria and algae live longer. Now let's look at an example of the opposite situation. 30 plus story tall, large window to wall ratio 60%. Tours organized by USGBC. The very first occupants started complaining about getting tan at their desks and unbearable heat from windows. So in this picture you see shades are down, artificial lighting is on, and the air conditioning was not picking the heat from the windows whenever office doors were open. The lowest temperature here is around 98 degrees Fahrenheit. The building receives multiple reflections from surrounding the environment and the bay and this temperature is when the shades are down. They only roll down so they lose the most valuable light at the top. The place didn't seem fit for habitation, much less the associated lead credit, but I was supposed to respond to a different question, whether the contractor installed the right glass. The glass was obviously letting too much heat in, the architects did not specify the performance of the glass and accepted the submittal from the major glass manufacturer. We analyzed the glass sample in our laboratory, simulated it in, in a computer software and measured it in the field. The conclusion of our investigation was very simple. This was precisely the glass that was submitted. The trouble was that this glass was very bad. Not even code compliant, much less leads for certifiable. Glass in the south should have a low solar heat gain coefficient. Otherwise, you would need a very efficient air conditioning working over time. You may remember one of the previous examples where firemen kept their hurricane shutters permanently on windows. Here is the opposite example, a huge greenhouse accumulating a lot of heat. So covering it with uh, something that would stop the solar heat from coming in and perhaps even pay for future glass replacement like uh, advertising media may be an appropriate solution. At the conclusion of this seminar, let me present some good sources, particularly books and seminars by uh, people who are considered gurus in the field. And unfortunately, let me warn you about, uh, against the bad sources, which are also, you know, almost prevalent in uh, media and uh, online. If you like the seminar, please let us know. And also, since we are a non-for-profit foundation, please donate. You can donate on our website. There is a button allowing for PayPal donations. Thank you and have a great rest of the day.